they have actually done snow days for Garrick on and just said, you know what, we're not even going to do remote today. You guys go out and shovel snow and play and do whatever you got to do. Take the, oh. you, you've missed so much this year. You shouldn't miss a good old fashioned snow day. No day. Right. So they've yeah. given the, given the, the high schools and given the schools that, of course, the parents are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to uh, welcome uh, Raya. Is that Raya or Ray? Uh, it's Rhea and Marina, mother and daughter. Rhea and Marina, nice to meet you. Hi. Okay. We're almost at, we, people, te people tend to kind of wander in a little, you know, it takes a little longer sometimes to get uh, uh, the Zoom to work. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see. we had a couple of other folks I know who said they thought they were going to join us. Okay. Yeah, after this, we're gonna make some snacks and watch the, the big game. I guess we're not allowed to say Super Bowl because uh, <laughs> it's copyrighted or branded or whatever, but I bought these. I don't know if them. These are like raw vegan um, pizza crusts. I don't know, they, they looked really good. So I figured out I'll make some pizza with these. Are they, uh, are they like cauliflower? I've seen the cauliflower uh, pizza crusts. Uh, veggies, sunflower seeds, let's see, carrot, zucchini, apple, flax seed, sunflower seed, turmeric, oregano, cayenne, black salt. That's it. We'll see what that's, we'll see what that tastes like, but I don't know, try and get, try and get creative. And I couldn't find any fun, uh, Super Bowl, uh, tablecloths, but I did find napkins. So that's really fun. <laughs> I don't know. Try to try to make things exciting. Try to make things a big deal because it's it's kind of hard to look forward to things these days if you're we're still in this situation. Yep. So yeah, that's right. We gotta we gotta make the best of what we've got with the hands. That's hand right. Work. That's right. But there's good some some good signs on the horizon mm -hmm. coming for you know March and April. So yeah, definitely. I think. I think hopefully mm -hmm. come out of it and start, you know, as we come back outdoors and who knows, maybe we should even start thinking about uh, we're planning for a, if March, if it's a nice day, the first Sunday of March. Oh, that would be nice. Right. Yes. All right. Never too early to, to, to have a little optimism. <laughs> right. But I mean, it looks like the cases are going down. Yeah. Cases are going down significantly. If we get some nice weather, mm -hmm. um, then that could be really so okay. But we can talk about that offline, and and we'll see what what we can come up with. Great, okay, great. Lauren. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. And welcome, uh, Glenn and Liz. Thank you. Hi, good to see you. It's All good right. to be here. I'm looking forward to it. Elaine and Robin. All right. So we can get started anytime if you want. Usually I give a couple more minutes just because it, you know, as I say, sometimes it takes people a little longer to mm. jump in. But if you are, if you're ready, Lauren, right? We've got a nice group here. Let's, you want to get going? Uh, yes. Do you have my video um, under spotlight for everybody? So it's like. I just, yeah, I just put it on speaker view. Excellent. I forgot to do that last time, but I all month long I've been saying, remember to put it on speaker view. So we're recording. <laughs> we have you on speaker view. Okay, good. I'll okay. tell you what, I'll do the intro. Great. Uh, actually, unless Sylvia, unless you want to do the intro for the ethical education, I'll do it and then you can watch if you want. I will do it and take notes, but welcome to everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks, Lauren, for doing this again. This is wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So, and I'll just say, this is a, a program of the ethical education and ethical enrichment programs of the Ethical Culture Society of Bergen County, of which we're a part. And uh, you can find us at ethicalfocus.org. Uh, we do a lot of different programs, Sunday platforms. Uh, we are, as you'll see, a non-theistic, uh, humanist, congregational, uh, religion. 
So with that said, uh, we do this because ethical eating for healthy and humane people and planet. Lauren's been doing it for a couple of years and it's the first Sunday of every month. And we're really glad to see some new folks here. So please do find out more about the society and uh, whether you might like to, uh, to possibly join or participate further. Okay, with that plug, now I'm gonna put it back. I think you're on speaker view, so take it away, Lauren. Okay, excellent. So hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Orlando. I have been providing this, this program through the Ethical Culture Society for a few years now. And it's so fun to, to have everybody on Zoom today because otherwise I'd be standing outside in the snow. So this is a good way for us to meet together. I have my Valentine's Day sweater on, so my little heart. So we are going to do Valentine's Day treats and they are chocolate themed because I love chocolate. And of course, it's nice to have a treat once in a while. These treats are gluten-free, oil-free, sugar-free, well, you know, other than natural sugar, of course, because I think that we can still indulge a little bit, but at the same time, we don't want to eat too much uh, processed or packaged foods, right? So we're going to have this last hurrah uh, of, of, of the wintertime and celebrating Valentine's Day, and then later on, hopefully, we'll, we'll talk about another juice cleanse or just, again, ways to incorporate the healthiest foods into our lifestyle. Well, this is all about treating ourselves. So uh, today, what I'm going to be making, uh, I'm going to be making a few different things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be making is a chocolate pudding tart, and I have these little mini tart pans. As I was explaining a few months back, I went to Home Goods and I bought these tart pans, but I ended up spending $100. I don't know on what, but <laughs> you can find these little pans there and it, they're, you can buy a whole stack of them for like $5. So they're excellent and it keeps, it helps with portion control because everybody has their own little, little dessert there. So anyway, let me uh, walk you through this pudding recipe. So this uh, pudding is actually avocado based and people have been asking me, how do you do that? I'm not sure. So just want to be, uh, be upfront. This is the first time I'm trying this with my class. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is mash uh, three to four avocados. So all I did was I mashed them and I, I put them in my refrigerator before class because I didn't think it'd be interesting to watch me <laughs> mashing avocados for 10 minutes. So here they are. Uh, it's a shame. It's almost like a tease because it, it looks like guacamole, but this is actually going to be a sweet treat, a sweet pudding. So uh, I have three avocados here that I just mashed as, as with, a, with a spoon. You could put them in your food processor, but I figured I would lose so much of it, it would get stuck under the blade and I, I, I would lose um, whatever bits and pieces of avocado I could. So I just mashed it with the spoon. It, it worked really well. We just have to have patience with it and, and work it really well uh, together to come together. Okay, um, the rest of the ingredients are, are pretty simple. Now I have a, a liquid sweetener and this is date syrup, all right? And date syrup is just simply water and blended up dates. Now I bought it, which is a shortcut. You could make it also in your food processor or high speed blender, dates and water and spin it around until you've got a syrup, your, your desired consistency. You don't have this, there's also, you could use um, maple syrup, uh, honey if you like, or I also have uh, coconut syrup, but you just want to have a, a liquid uh, type of sweetener because it'll blend well with the avocados. I wouldn't use dates because it, the consistency would be a little too chewy. So here's the date syrup. And I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of this date syrup into my mashed avocado. Now, the recipe that I've used calls for up to a third of a cup. I feel like that's going to be really sweet. So I'm gonna start off with a quarter cup actually, which is a, a few tablespoons here, just to see how that's going to incorporate here. And again, this is, I'm using my date syrup. This is actually really popular. I bought this again at my favorite place, Home Goods. <laughs> uh, I'm an addict, I don't, I'm, a, I'm not afraid to admit it. But um, I'm going to start with this quarter of a cup and I'll mix it in to my mashed avocado here. Again, we're making a pudding, raw vegan, kind of like a chocolate mousse pudding to put into our mini tarts. I 
And so that, that looks like it's going to be quite sweet. And I'm not going to add any more than a quarter cup of this date syrup. So I'm just going to mix this around with my spoon here. Uh, in the background, you hear my, my bird. His name is Milo. And he is a dusky conure. The poor guy never learned how to talk. So when he wants something, he's like a baby. He'll cry or scream until somebody comes over and feeds him, pays attention to him. And he's probably really upset because he, he enjoys being the center of attention. So my back is turned and I'm talking to all of you folks and he, he likes to have all the attention on him at all times. So hopefully he'll calm down once he sees that uh, he's not gonna be getting my attention for a little while. All right, so now we're just blending, um, stirring this together. Couple of little chunks are here, so I'm gonna just work them in a little bit more. Okay, so starting to look like a pudding, but still missing the most important part, and that's the cacao powder. Okay, so here it is. Looking like something here, but not quite finished yet. All right, so we have our raw cacao powder. And I'm gonna take out my tablespoon here. And we can only, probably okay with a quarter cup of this. So let me get my measuring cup here. Okay. Quarter cup of cacao powder. It's, it's cacao powder. Um, unlike cocoa powder is the raw form uh, of the cacao bean and it's ground up. Cocoa powder is the uh, roasted form of that then ground down. So cacao powder is, I would say, a lot more strong, a lot bitter, more bitter. So you don't really need to have too much. You want that chocolatey flavor, of course, but at the same time, you don't want it to be too, too bitter because remember, this is supposed to be a sweet treat. So have our cacao powder in there. And then mix it around. It really is this simple. Now we really, really want to stir it well because whew, there's a lot of powder coming out over here. <laughs> All right. That's why we have sponges. Here we go. So I'm going to continue stirring this around. And before I finish stirring it entirely, I am going to add just a pinch of Celtic sea salt, just a pinch. You always wanna balance any type of intense sweet flavor with, with salt. It makes it makes the sweetness come out, but it also balances it. So a lot of baked goods always have um, a just a little pinch of salt. So we're gonna do that here. Just a little, like a little, little bit, just that much, okay? All right. Okay, it smells delicious. I know it's kind of hard to believe, but we do have chocolate pudding, a little bit of a chocolate mousse in here. And you know what? In order to incorporate it well, I am going to get um, my whisk. And I'm just going to use my whisk to incorporate it a little bit more. See something here in the chat? <laughs> Hi, Milo. Yeah, <laughs> poor, poor guy. We're ignoring him. Poor bird. All right, so I'm just going to use my whisk. That's going to help get all the rest of the clumps out. Yep, that's great. Okay, and here's our chocolate mousse. Looks delicious, smells delicious. Um, I like to, it's just, this is just my style, but I do sometimes like to use uh, a little bit of cinnamon in my chocolate. I feel like it, it really brings out the sweet flavor. My husband, though, does not care for cinnamon. So because I want him to try this, I won't add it this time. So he lucked out. Okay, now while I prepare the crust, I am gonna put this in the refrigerator. Dates tend to kind of set up, so to speak, in the refrigerator. So it'll keep it, it'll start to harden a little bit, which will be good before we make our crusts. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Oh my goodness, Milo. Okay, now I'm gonna just clear my area here. And so now we're gonna move on to the crust. So I'm just gonna close this up for the time being. As I say during all of our meetings, it's always good to clean up as you go as much as possible so that by the time you're finished with your last dish, 
the whole kitchen is clean. That would be ideal. That's always something I, I try to work for. About how much cinnamon for the pudding? Really to taste, Sylvia, I would do a quarter teaspoon, you know, a half teaspoon, sprinkle it, you know, just sprinkle it in. Um, but I love, I love cinnamon with my chocolate. It's just not really, it's not an official part of the recipe, but I, I usually add cinnamon to chocolate. Okay. So next we're gonna work on the crust. All right. So the crust is a combination of nuts and, nuts and dates, just like uh, a lot of the pie recipes I've done in the past. How much cacao? Um, how much cacao did I put in? I think I only put in a quarter cup of cacao. Yes, thank you. Okay, so typically when I make a big pie crust, I usually will double this, but I'm only making four mini tarts just because of the, the yield of the chocolate pudding. Um, of course, you could double the pudding and make a large pie, but I like the, um, the single, the single uh, serving. Yes, thank you for taking notes. So um, just, to, just to let you know, uh, during the, when the weather gets warmer and we can be outside or at, you know, at any point in time, we do like to have some sort of potluck. So I'm glad, I think Eric said he's taking notes because um, we, I do ask anybody who's been coming to the program, if they could bring a dish, kind of showing off what they learned or they were inspired to create something based on what I've shown. So it's good that we're taking notes because hopefully everybody kind of show up with their own rendition of some of the dishes that we've seen together. Okay, so I have these delicious pitted medjool dates. All right, they are delicious, delicious, organic. Um, this brand, Terrasol, is, is my favorite. Uh, they make nuts as well as seeds and they have the dried fruit as well. Um, it's just a high quality flavor that they have to them. I can't really explain it, but you'll have to try them for yourself. So anyway, back to what I was saying about the crust, nuts and fruit. So one of the things I want to do first is blend up the amount of the nuts. So, I'm going to add in walnuts, okay? And walnuts, I'm going to put in half a cup. My food processor. Okay. And almonds, yeah, these were from, not unfortunately not from Terror Soul, but from Whole Foods, just as good. And almonds, I'm going to add in a half a cup, one half cup. Right. Whoops, dropped a couple in the sink. That's okay. One of the things I like to stress is that uh, preparing food is absolutely not like rocket science. And when you're dealing with raw food, if the texture isn't right, you add more dry ingredients or you add more wet ingredients, or you add a little bit of water. It's not, the food processor isn't moving, just add some water. So I never want you to feel stressed out if it's not coming out just right. There are always some <laughs> tweaks you can make along the way. Um, but uh, you will come to a point where if you do prepare these types of recipes on a regular basis, you'll kind of have a feel for looking into the bowl and seeing, do I have enough wet ingredients in relation to dry ingredients and just kind of making adjustments as you go. Um, a lot of these, a lot of times now it's, it's dry, so dry outside, um, you know, with, with the heat going on. And of course the snow is just making the heat last even more. It's going to get down to 10 degrees tonight. So everything in my house is dry. My hair is dry. My skin is dry. Everything's dry. What I'm saying is that I feel like I have to add more liquid to my recipes. Whereas in the summertime, because it's so humid, don't really need to add so much uh, to, to, to the recipes to get them to, to whiz around in the food processor and the blender with ease. So almonds, walnuts, and now we're going to add our dates. Where are they? Oh, they're over, over here. Great. The dates, I'm going to add in six dates, and they're already pitted, but one of the things I like to do is this date, let's see if you can see, this date's pitted, right? But dates typically also have like a, like a cap 
on them, like an end on them, that's that's not delicious and it can kind of take away from your dish. So even though if you do have pitted dates, just double check that they don't have that bitter end cap on them. It'll, it'll kind of ruin the, the texture and the taste. So I'm gonna put in six of these and just make sure that they're truly pitted and there's nothing that's gonna make them not taste great. Two, this is our third one. And sometimes when you buy pitted dates, they're not actually pitted. So you gotta, be, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna ruin your nice recipe with that. Those pits will never, they never grind down, not even with my Vitamix. They grind down, but not, they don't combine entirely. Okay, so six dates are in. Okay. Well, Sylvia yeah. had a question about uh, allergy. Okay, sorry, uh, can you read it? My hands are dirty, I can't touch my computer. <laughs> What's the question? You're muted. I'm sorry. Can, can you use um, all almonds instead of walnuts and almonds because I have a walnut allergy? You can. Are you allergic to macadamia or cashew? No. You're not allergic to them? No. Uh, I would recommend instead of all almonds uh, to get a fattier nut, so macadamia or cashew instead of instead of the walnut. It's just okay. The, the, well, every time I try to make these recipes, the almonds grind down to almost uh, like a flour. They, yes. They're very powdery. Whereas a walnut, um, a cashew, a higher fat, like a Brazil nut or a macadamia nut, now they're adding more fat, like an oily type of a texture. So okay. that's why I have both those different types of nuts to create that kind of um, like a crust. You know, when you uh, make any type of pastry crust, you always have flour and you cut butter into it. Yes, right, right. So that's kind of the same type of mouthfeel texture ingredients I'm using to kind of mimic that. Okay. But great question. Great. Thank you. Yes, of course. Oh my goodness, my love. All right. So I'm going to now, with just these ingredients, I'm going to process, process this. Um, I may need to use my spatula to get it to combine. So here we go. So we can see here, can you see on the camera? Let's see if I can bring my computer over. I can unplug it a little bit. So we can see here that in the food processor, it looks a little crumbly. So I am going to process it a little bit more. It will uh, press together very well in the pan. So don't freak out if it doesn't come together like a true dough, it's not supposed to. It's kind of like a graham cracker crust. You'll be able to push it down into these little tart pans and, and it'll stick together. But I am going to combine it just a little bit more so you don't have those big pieces of date in there. One more spin around. I am going to just use my little spatula here and make sure everything. Sometimes with your, um, every time you use a food processor and you have dried fruit, the fruit sometimes tends to go underneath the blade, and that part is a lot more combined, of course, than, than the, the top of the mixture. So I'm just gonna throw this around and one more time try to blend it all together. So that's going to be our crust. It's like a little pudding pie, graham cracker crust. And let me just double check the chat here. Okay, good. We've addressed all the questions in the chat. Excellent. So you can 
then if you want to, you can spray, if you have little pans like this, you can spray with a little bit of organic coconut oil. I, I like to be oil free. These pans I've used maybe once and they are nonstick. So I'm just gonna go with it. If you were refrigerated overnight, you don't need to have oil, okay? It'll, it'll, it'll come out of, of this uh, quite nice, nicely, excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and to evenly divide this mixture into these four tart pans here. I'm just using my spoon at first. And I'm just eyeballing it. And then when I know that I've, I've divided the mixture evenly among the four, then I'll go ahead and press it down into the bottom and it'll come up a little on the sides as well. So. I remember putting pudding pie always being my favorite. Um, I was never a really big fan growing up of uh, fruit pies, apple pie really didn't do it for me. Pecan pie was okay, but chocolate, chocolate cream pie, pudding pie, that was always my favorite. And my mom used to get so fancy. She would sometimes make it layered with like ricotta cheese and sugar. Like she got really fancy with her pudding pies um, because pudding is, uh, I think you can get sugar-free pudding. So if you're on a low carb diet, when you get those, those packs, I guess you could do it that way. But I do feel that if we eat whole plant-based foods, we don't need to really have such a restrictive diet because the body really knows how to assimilate, process, metabolize whole plant-based foods. So I like to live this way and you can eat as much as you want. Yes. Okay. So now that I've got my even, you know what, let me pull this down a little bit more. So now that I have my even amount here, uh, I am going to use the back of my spoon to just press it down on the bottom. Okay. And you can see, I promise it does come together. Okay. Very well actually, just sticky enough. And that's another thing too. Um, again, the fat from the walnut or cashew or macadamia will help everything also kind of stick together. So I'm just gonna continue to press this down in my pan here. Okay, Let's see. Okay, so that's how it looks. So I've done pies uh, for our classes quite a few times. The reason why I like pie is because it's it's really easy and people recognize it. So if you had a gathering today, for example, um, you could bring a pie, you can bring a tart and people aren't so afraid to try um, things that they recognize, right? So vegan sweets or plant-based pies, you know, if you don't wanna call it vegan, you wanna say everything's plant-based, you can, you can say that as well they're more likely to try it, right? I have so many friends who would never, never, well, at least they tell me they will never go vegan, but you, they'll eat a vegan cupcake. <laughs> they'll have a vegan cake. So I always try, if I'm invited somewhere, um, I'll try to bring a vegan dessert because that's something that people aren't afraid to try. And of course, I'll have something to eat at the end of the meal myself. So just gonna go ahead and finish pressing this into the pan. Take your time. Sometimes the nuts and dates will stick to the back of your spoon. You can either switch your spoon, wipe off your spoon. You could do that. You can put your fingers in here if you want and really get into it like Play-Doh. It's very meditative to put your hands in your food. Maybe that's just my experience, but I, I, do, I do enjoy making like uh, meatballs or you know just kind of getting my hands in there and making something. So. All right, so here are the crusts. And like I said, um, if you refrigerate them overnight, you don't really need any oil, they will come out and then you'll be able to serve them on a beautiful platter with a doily, with a garnish, however you like. I'm, I'm choosing not to use sugar, but if you wanted to use powdered sugar, to dress them up a little bit, trying to impress some friends or family or your in-laws, <laughs> you can use powdered sugar. <laughs> Okay, so let me get my pudding here. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so gorgeous. Okay, you can see my counter, you can't see my face, but that's okay. 
So I'm just gonna give this another quick stir. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. Just put your pudding right here. Mm -hmm. I love using the avocado because it keeps it so fluffy and so dense. You can almost make another layer right on top of here, like a, like a, like a mini cake. Okay, nice. Sometimes I like to also garnish with coconut, just coconut flakes, or you can get fancy and instead of buying toasted coconut, you know, you can always get the coconut flakes, throw them in your a skillet or a frying pan, no oil, just very low heat and keep mixing, mixing, mixing. And before you know it, you have toasted coconut. You can always do that as well. This would be nice garnish with the, any type of coconut or toasted coconut, nuts. Uh, raw nuts, cashew, almond would be beautiful as well. I'm keeping it a little simple here because I know the palettes I'm catering to today. <laughs> or it'll just be mine if nobody comes over and I'm just sitting on my couch eating tarts, that'll be okay too. Okay, but as you can see, it's just enough for four little tarts. So you will have to double it. You'll have to get six avocados, you know, and you will have to double up the nuts and the dates as well, but who knew? You can take avocados and make a delicious chocolate pudding tart. All right, so here they are, it's the finished product. Can you see them? Oh, not very well. There they are, awesome. Oh, they look so good. Thank you. Oh, I wish we were still, I wish we were doing samples like, uh, you know, when we're back in person. Yes. So something to look forward to. Yes, if we're in person, then I make enough for everybody to try some. And that's really fun too, because we have the demo, we have food to eat, and then we start to interact and talk with each other. And it's a very nice afternoon. It's, it's something I really enjoy doing. So um, yeah, I hope we can start doing that in the spring. Can't do it today, obviously, but when the weather warms up, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I heard that the groundhog did see his shadow, which was very interesting to me because it was snowing that day. So we'll have to just, <laughs> we'll have to just wait and see. Um, I'm just gonna put a couple of cute little almonds on top. Uh, usually in, in the culinary world now, by, by no means do I have a culinary degree. I have a food coaching certification uh, and I'm an educator. Um, I'm a math teacher and I work in supplemental education as a business consultant. So food is just my, my fun and my, and my hobby, but uh, just in, in the time that I've been doing this, I read, I've heard that sometimes your garnish sh should represent whatever the contents of your recipe are. So I did, I did garnish a little bit with some almonds because I use almonds on my crust. So there you go. That's the final, final product. And I'm gonna uh, pop these in my refrigerator now. So that come game, come game time, I can just take a spoon to this <laughs> and eat them. So. Um, you could always put them on like a mini tray cookie cookie sheet and just put it in your refrigerator, but I don't think I'll have the room to do that. I'm just gonna shove them in my refrigerator just as they are. So here we go. Hi everybody. Hi Eric. Hi Mark. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? All the snow, huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. We're we're you know on top of what we had earlier. All right. When are you guys gonna open up the place for, for again for a little, for not for a while? Well, we're gonna have to wait at least for better weather before we can do outdoor activities. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, just for those of you who might not uh, otherwise be familiar, ethical culture. And while Lauren is putting her stuff and getting ready for the next sure. uh, recipe, I'll just say we we do have a meeting house in Teaneck. And usually we'll have this indoors in the meeting house, but with COVID, uh, we've been doing it outdoors as well as uh, putting it out on uh, the uh, Zoom and on Facebook Live. Uh, so we've been doing kind of a hybrid presentation, but we're hoping as, we, uh, as, as the prevalence gets to a really low level, and of course, as people get uh, more availability with vaccines and we begin to build up some of that community immunity. We have a task force that's looking to see how and when we'll be able to 
get back into the meeting house. But at the very least, if we get good weather, we can do it outside on the front lawn. So we just want to make sure that we're safe for everyone who's coming in. Uh, so that's the long answer to your short question, Mark. The answer is as yeah. soon as we can, I guess. Yeah, I miss you guys. It's fun hanging out there on the weekends and all the programs and everything. You bet. Well, hopefully we see you on Zoom. Yeah. So glad you're here. All right, Lauren, I'll let you get back to what you're doing. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. So now I'm going to do two, two more recipes. The first one is a little bit faster than the second, but um, I realized all this time I've never shown you how to make um, like a frosting. So we're going to make a cashew buttercream today, which is so good and it's so addictive. The first time I made it was for the holidays. I made cookies with this frosting. Everybody ate it, vegan or not, delicious, delicious stuff. So uh, first we're going to make a chocolate cake and then in a uh, square cake pan, and then we'll make our frosting to go on top. The cake is made using a food processor still, but the frosting is actually made in my high-speed blender. I happen to have a Vitamix. You could use your food processor certainly as well, but it's just my preference, right? When I when I make things that I want to be a bit more spreadable, I use the gravity of the high speed blender. It doesn't stick to the sides as much, doesn't go under the food as much, and tends to turn out just the right texture that I'm looking for. But again, if you have a food processor at home, just be sure that after you make the cake, you you wash it out thoroughly and on to the next recipe. So here we go. This is chocolate cake. This is similar to my recipe that I've made before for, for the raw brownies or the uh, raw um, chocolate truffles. Pretty much the same flavor profile, but instead of rolling it into balls or pressing it into a cookie, we're gonna put it in a cake pan. So same type of idea, nuts, fruit. I am going to use my cinnamon this time around. And the only difference is, is when we make things like a cake or a brownie, it's sometimes easier to blend up the, uh, the dry ingredients first, to make almost like a flour, so that by the time we add this, the sticky dates, it does blend up finely into uh, a type of a cake feel. So I'm gonna put in a half a cup of almonds into my food processor here. All right, and this is by no means low fat. <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. Um, and then I'm going to put in one and a half cups of organic raw, raw walnuts. So this is a half cup measure. So I'm going to use three of these. Two, that one's kind of shallow. So I'll make this one a little bit overflowing here. Three, can you see? Yeah, you can see. Okay, good. I put in a couple of extra because one of my cups was a little shallow there. All right. But so we have a total of two cups of uh, nuts in here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of blend this until it's fine like a flour. All right, here we go. It is a little sticky. As, as you notice, I didn't take my own advice and actually clean out my food processor from our last recipe. So it is a little bit stickier than I would like. It's okay. Um, but I don't want to blend it so much because as you can see, it's sticking a little bit to the bottom here. You can see that there. So let me just try to mitigate that issue here. And uh, all right, so next I have um, organic raw almond butter. Artisana happens to be my favorite brand. Artisana and da Dastany uh, uh, almond butter. Those are my two favorite. Um, that D-A-S-T-O-N-Y, -D Dastany, uh, tends to use sprouted nuts when they make butter. So sprouting means that they soak them overnight and then dehydrate them and then make a nut butter. That's the best nut butter experience I promise you'll ever have. But this is pretty close. I like this brand the best. This is Artisana. And uh, in, terms, in terms of the recipe, I'm gonna use a quarter cup of raw almond butter. You could use peanut butter, macadamia nut butter, whatever type of nut butter you like. But again, it's gonna give it that creamy, chewy type of texture that you would want for like a cake, right? Has to be a little bit dense, a little bit chewy, 
So I'm using not just nuts and fruit, but also nut butter. Okay, so I'm actually, I know this is very rare, but I'm using measuring cups. <laughs> Don't always use measuring cups, okay? And this is going in, quarter cup of our almond butter. Now, now that I have the nuts kind of browned down here, I am going to add my dates and cinnamon as well. So that's our almond butter. Move this to the side here. Next, we'll add the dates. So here are the visual dates. Okay, now this one, because we're doing a bigger type of pan and we need more of a certain yield here, I am going to use 10 to 12 dates. So I'll probably start off with 10. Okay, and here's what I was talking about. Like this mysterious little cap thing on the end of the date. Pick, pick this off. You don't, you don't want this in your, in your delicious cake recipe here. So I'm gonna do 10 dates. So here's one. Let's see, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Ten dates. Now we're gonna have to have again a little bit of patience with this as we blend it together in our food processor because it is stick, it's powder on the bottom and sticky on top. So do make sure you have your spatula nearby to get it all to combine. Okay, so as you can see, it's coming together like a dough. You see how it's starting to congeal together? That's exactly how we want it to look. And then from here, we'll add in our cinnamon. So this is about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, just like that. And our cacao, raw cacao. All right, raw cacao, same measurement, quarter cup. You could go up to a half cup here, but it would be extremely chocolatey. With a quarter cup, it's almost kind of like a red velvet type of flavor profile. It's got that hint of chocolate, but it's not too overpowering. Okay, so that's quarter cup, like that. Excellent. All right. I'll use my spatula to just kind of make sure everything combines, and I will blend this up one last time. It should be good to go. One last time, it's a little, it's just, a, it's coming together quite well, but it has, you can still see some of the pieces of dates kind of stuck in here with the, the nuts. And I want it to be as smooth as possible, so it's like a cake. All right, um, so my food processor brand is Farberware. I also have a Cuisinart, just to say that these are just kind of your standard food processors that you could pretty much find at Bed Bath & Beyond or any type of place where you can get appliances. Kohl's will probably have them as well. Um, so I don't have anything fancy. Uh, one of the things I usually like to remind everyone about the food processor is that the blade will go quite blunt. Okay, it doesn't mix very well if you leave it submerged in any sort of water. So anytime, if you don't feel like cleaning your food processor, what I always tell my classes is just take the blade out and make sure you wash that and dry it very well. If you wanna leave this soaking in the sink, by all means do, but it's the blade that usually goes first before the machine, all right? You wanna make sure you take care of the blade. And if you do that, this has lasted me now seven years, 
um, you know, it, it does, it does work. I learned my lesson once I, I mailed from the manufacturer. They did give me two blades. I think I had to pay for that and send them a check or some nonsense like that, but I've learned my lesson. And now, um, my food processor is lasting me a, a nice long time. So just wanted to make sure I mentioned that that is something I try to emphasize each time we have our meeting. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to now, you can see how well this came together. Okay, it, it kind of does look like cake, right? It's just not in a pan. So the context is a little strange, but here we go. We're gonna put it in. I have an eight by eight square pan and it's the perfect size for this. You could put it in a round pan. You could double this and make it a layer cake. You could go crazy, but I try to keep it quite simple. Um, in my house, I try to eat mostly um, uncooked, unprocessed, raw, vegan. My husband is regular vegan. And the reason why I'm saying it is that I only want a small pan <laughs> because I'm going to eat this cake. <laughs> I'm having this cake and not Ryan. So I have to be sure that it's a, it's a manageable serving for me because I'm just going to take a fork to this later. So once you have it in your pan, okay, you can use your spatula to work it into the different corners here as best as you can, but because it's so dense, you will need to now, of course, wash your hands and then just keep your fingertips kind of damp like this. Like, just like if you were uh, making meatballs, <laughs> you know, and that sometimes the, the whatever you're making them with, bean, meat, whatever, they get stuck to your hands, not great. So just keep your fingertips kind of damp here and press it down into the pan. The goal is to make it look like a cake. So we want it to be as flat and even as possible. Okay. So I'm just working this into the bottom of the pan. It has a great consistency today. Um, I can tell that after I refrigerate it, for a while, it will slice just like the cake, but that extra fat of the almond butter is also, I'm sorry, you can't see. That extra fat of the almond butter is also so important here because it prevents it from getting too hard and chewy. It's a, it has just enough of a bite to it, like a moist cake. So this is what it looks like in the pan, huh? Kind of like a cake. Not exactly like a cake, but it also doesn't fall out of a pan like a cake, <laughs> but it does the job. So I'm gonna uh, just pop, rinse my hands really quick and pop this in the refrigerator so that it does start to harden. And then I'll show you how to make that delicious cashew buttercream. Oh my goodness, it's very chocolatey. Even with just that little bit, that quarter cup of cacao, I can smell it. It definitely smells quite rich and delicious. To put this in my fridge, Great. So I'm going to just move my food processor out of the way. Uh, okay, I see something in the chat here. Oh, awesome, Sylvia. Yeah, I hope that that helps you to uh, retain the life of your food processor. Any, any questions so far before I move on to our last recipe and put it all together? Uh, just remind me that you had two types of nuts in that last recipe. Yes, almond, walnut, half a cup, one and a half cups, and then I also used quarter cup of almond butter, raw almond butter. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, anybody else questions? Okay. All right. I'll keep watching the chat. So let me go ahead and clear this. Move my food processor out of the way and get my Vitamix here. Great. I can move away my cutting board now. We're finished with this. Bring over my food, my Vitamix. So uh love my vitamix it's probably one of my favorite things um i ever invested in 
I feel like it changed my life once I got my Vitamix and I bought my juicer as well. Um, because the Vitamix, uh, the one, the one of the reasons why I like the Vitamix the most is because the amount of, of ingredients you can put in here that actually do process out. So every time I use a high speed blender, sometimes I would really, really, really strain the motor with the Vitamix. It's almost impossible to strain the motor unless you're just putting in purely frozen like bananas or strawberries without any water, you'll, you'll strain the motor on this. But that's the reason why I like it is because I can fill up my ingredients all the way to the tippy tippy top and it will process down. It's, it's extremely powerful. Um, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> it has that level of import, importance in my kitchen as just like a stove or a microwave to anybody else. So I can't live my life without my Vitamix. There will be days where I'll make my smoothie, my salad dressing, and my soup all in one day using my Vitamix. So I, I need it. It's, it's a necessity in our kitchen. Okay, that's enough about the Vitamix. We're moving on to our cashew buttercream. So these are an interesting variety of cashews. This is also that same brand, Terrasol. These are called milk, milk cashew. And I'm guessing the reason why they're called milk cashew is because I don't know if you can see here, they're kind of halved, right? They're not the, the whole cashew. And when they're halved like this, they, they tend to blend much better into water. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use coconut water and they become very, very creamy, very, very quick. So I, I do like to use these milk cashews. So in order to make our cashew buttercream, I'm going to put in, Here's a half cup. I'm gonna put in a cup of cashews. So that's my half. And now we are at a full cup here. I'll drop these into the sink. And our dates. Oh my goodness, you should see how much food I have in my freezer here. Nobody comes over for the Super Bowl, then it's just gonna be a, a fun afternoon of eating on the couch, that's for sure. Okay, so now um, the dates, I'm going to add in 10 dates. A lot of dates. Dates are excellent. They're so high in potassium. Four, six. Dates are actually higher in potassium than bananas. So on very hot days when I'm uh, either exercising outside or doing yard work, um, I tend to just drop one or two dates in my smoothie um, with everything else. And it does make it a little bit sweeter, but I do find that it really helps me stay hydrated um, a lot better, especially because it has that potassium in here. So love to have dates. Dates are also really good if you're having a hard time with constipation. Just have some raw dates, chop them up, put them on top of whatever, your cereal, or throw them into your smoothie. Again, it, they really do help. They have a very, very high dietary fiber. They can kind of erase that situation a lot faster than any type of supplement dates. Okay, so that's it. All right, now we are going to use um, coconut water. This is my favorite brand, Harmless uh, Harvest. And if you can see, it's, it's pink, all right? It's completely unprocessed, uh, raw as, 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 as you can get. Um, and it's just, uh, this is just the varying colors of the true water of the coconut. It's not clear, it's, it's really this color. So um, I'm gonna put it to the side though. I'm not going to add it yet. So the way this works is you blend the cup of cashew and the 10 dates together they'll start to look almost like a dough, just like we had before. And then you're gradually going to add coconut water. This is a 16 ounce bottle of coconut water. So you will probably use half of this, eight, eight, a one cup, but do not add it all at once. You wanna go very gradually. Your consistency of a buttercream is going to be based on what you like. If you like it to be very soft and fluffy like a buttercream, you'll add more water. If you decide to get really creative and put this in a piping bag, like you would at a bakery, you're probably only gonna use a quarter of this, only four ounces. So it's really gonna depend on what you like. If you want the frosting to stand up to embellishments like sprinkles, things like that, again, less coconut water. So it's really, you're just gonna have to eyeball it, but make sure you have at least one cup, okay? All right, so here we go. Gonna blend this together and then I'll gradually add my coconut water, which I'll do through the top eventually.
right, so I'm gonna stop it there. You can see that it looks very powdery, almost like the dough we were making before. It's, it's incredible. The reason why I wait to add the uh, coconut water is because everything has water in it. Dates, although they're very sticky and they're dried through, they still have water in them. And, the, and of course the cashews are, re are really fatty as well. So there's moisture in them. So now we can make sure we can control the moisture content as much as possible to make our consistency for our buttercream. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully open up this delicious coconut water. And I will add just a little bit and get this going. All right, let me go ahead and just use my spatula here work it down the sides. And that same dilemma that I was telling you, under the blade is all incorporated, the top not so much, so you just have to work with it and have the patience, make the commitment that you will have buttercream, it will happen, just have to just go in methodical steps here. Right, and this is the process, just a little bit of coconut water, mix it down, scrape it down, blend until we get something that looks like a frosting. Right now it just looks like a really uh, nutty toothpaste, but it'll get there, it'll get there. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it is starting to come together. You can see it's starting to look like a buttercream. I just wanna let you know that I only used uh, maybe uh, a quarter cup, a little bit more uh, of, water, of this coconut water. So I still have up to here, right? So you can see that we don't really need to, you wanna just add it gradually so you don't make the mistake of adding too much and then spoiling your buttercream here. All right, so I don't think I'm going to add any more yet. I'm gonna just work with my spatula to get it all to combine. To me, the, the effort of getting this to, to come together is still certainly, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but to me, so worth it. Uh, I remember eating the uh, frosting out of the can, you know, like the Duncan Hines uh, frosting canisters and that stuff, although delicious, it's extremely addictive. So <laughs> when you have this, it's actually, it's very filling. It's, it's very satisfying. <laughs> See, you see it? Oh yeah. So I promise it does come together like a frosting. Just have to have the patience to work through it, work through it. So growing up, um, I don't know if you can tell by my last name, this is my married name, Orlando. Um, but growing up, I uh, grew up in an Italian house and the patience to put together your own homemade tomato sauce, that was uh, a task, a chore a commitment every Sunday for hours on the stove, stirring, 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 my mom, stirring the sauce, watch the sauce, watch the sauce, on the simmer, watch the sauce. If it would boil too much, it would be a big deal. So <laughs> same type of concept. You wanna just make sure you watch it and give it the care it deserves.
See it? Oh yeah, delicious. So this is like our, this is our frosting. This is our buttercream that we're gonna put on top of our cake. And you'll, again, you notice it's quite thick. It's not coming out of my Vitamix any way, shape or form. It's pipeable. You could put it in a piping bag or even just a plastic bag with a piping tip or no tip, just poke a hole in the bottom of it and pipe it on top of anything you like. It doesn't have to be this recipe, you could use it on any other type of recipe. You can even put it on top of the little pies that we made if you wanted to. Um, sometimes I dip things into this like fruit or cookies. It's, I know, I don't even know if I should be admitting that on camera, this is being recorded, but it does work. It does serve that purpose as well. Okay, so here's our delicious cake. And I'm gonna put this right on top here, okay? So uh, the cake technique is always one spoon and one butter knife, or if you happen to have a cake, uh, whatever, uh, frosting spreader, you could, you could do that as well. Um, in my kitchen, I don't really have a lot of single use items. I have multi-use items. So a knife you can use to cut things and a knife you can use to spread frosting, right? So that's kind of how I roll. And you spoon it on top, of course, and then use the knife or icing spreader to get the cake covered. When you go to any sort of high-end type of raw vegan restaurant or even vegan restaurant, the baked goods are always so expensive. And it's like, why? Why is it that I, I'm buying this cake and it's it's so expensive? And the fact of the matter is, is if you're using whole plant-based foods, they happen to, the less refined, it seems that the, uh, the more of an investment it is. So, the, the, what I find to be the best solution is to buy in bulk. They don't have the bulk bins anymore, of course, during COVID, but if you can buy nuts by the pound, multiple pounds at a time, you buy it once, but it does, you do end up saving. So I do recommend that if you decide to make recipes like this, you saw how giant my bags of nuts are. I store them in the freezer. So you should store your nuts and coffee beans in the freezer. Anything with oils in them can go rancid. So they should be under refrigeration. So that would be nuts, seeds, coffee beans. That should, those should be stored in the freezer, airtight container in the freezer as well. I don't like to admit this, but I do love coffee. <laughs> I just don't, I choose not to have it so I can stay as healthy as possible, but I do love caffeine. Okay, so here it is. See again how wonderful this is, nice and thick, and we're just going to spread it on top of our cake here. And uh, you can you can garnish this however you like. You could put some fresh strawberries on top, blueberry, sliced banana, sprinkles, but this is going to be so delicious later. Again, especially because I feel like I'm gonna be eating this whole pan myself and that's okay. So when you make this cake, this can be your own personal cake that you can enjoy at home. And here it is. Oh yeah, look at that chocolate cake, delicious. Yum. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, quite addictive here. So, um, and so that's my cake and those are my chocolate tarts and I guess now if uh, Eric, you wanted to add anything or we can take some questions, open forum. Okay, anybody have any questions you wanna throw in the chat or just ask? So Lauren, that was great. And, and I, I, I would think that if you don't get to finish that whole pan, <laughs> it is gonna go in the fridge tonight, I would assume. Definitely. Um, I usually put my nuts in the refrigerator, but okay. I didn't think to put them in the freezer in an airtight. That's that's some, another good tip. So thank you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the freezer I think really increases the uh, the life of um, the nut seeds. I even put my flax seed, chia seed in the freezer, um, as well as my coffee beans as well. Cool. All right. Anybody else? 
Thoughts? I started Googling Vitamix blenders. <laughs> oh my goodness, I convinced you. It, it is yeah. an investment. It's an investment. But I think they have a lifetime warranty. So God forbid anything broke on this thing, which is again really hard to do. They'll they replace or send it's it's worth it. Just one. But yeah, especially if you use it for all three courses, you know, the 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 smoothie, the the soup, the you know, thank you. Yeah. I have the Vitamix for about 15 years now, and it's just amazing. I just love it. So you, yeah. you know, usually when you used to have a blender, you'd have to replace it every once in a while. Right. Have this for at least 15 years. Right. That's see that it, that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, it is it is pricey, but it should be yeah. like a once or maybe maybe two time purchase your whole life, um, and and they're worth it. One of the things I do recommend also is with with these expensive appliances that we're talking about the. Uh, we talked about the food processor with the Vitamix too. Again, you shouldn't keep the blade submerged in water. Okay, so if you made something sticky like this, you're just gonna you're gonna have to wash it. Okay, don't keep the blade submerged in any type of water or substance here to keep the integrity of the blade. And this lid, of course, you can see it has all of these different ridges on it, and food will get stuck in here. There's a plastic, um, like a rubber piece that goes around here. This can come off, and you can get on the inside of this lid here. Um, but again, try to try to wash this, the lid included as soon as you're done um, and it'll it'll prevent it from getting too nasty and corroded because <laughs> you are gonna keep it for, for life, right? So just thought I'd add that in there as well. Okay, anything else? Uh, I had a question. You said you could do this as a layer cake. So you the, the frosting will hold up, will it still cut? Yeah, wow. yeah, you could use it as a layer cake. You would um, either use a skinnier pan and, and just keep this. You What we want to do is you want to make this cake recipe um, in two separate pans and refrigerate them both. Remove, it has to be at least overnight, right? Because I, I, again, I didn't use any oil. So refrigerate overnight, remove one of these um, out of the pan. And you can put the buttercream in the middle and then make a second batch to put on top. It, it'll definitely hold up. For sure. It's indestructible, this thing. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Laura, so where do you get your um, terrasol nuts and uh, um, dates? They're um, affiliated, I think, through Amazon. Okay. Amazon, fortunately or unfortunately, owns everything at this point. So they're, they're a company, they're, they're through Amazon. I think you can also buy them on thrivemarket.com, thrivemarket.com. They'll have that brand as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge difference. I mean, I've even done experiments with my bird over here. I, I gave him a walnut from Whole Foods, organic walnut from Whole Foods, and I gave him an organic walnut from Terrasol. He eats the one from Terrasol and he rejects the one from Whole Foods. So there has to be something <laughs> embedded in that, that I, you know, maybe they're fresher or um, I, I do feel like uh, walnuts typically have, if you don't, even if you don't soak them, of course, uh, a bitter kind of acidic aftertaste that lingers on the back of your tongue. But with these uh, nuts in particular, I don't really get that so much. It's kind of like a smoother taste. So maybe that's the reason why Milo likes them better. Great. Good. Yeah. Okay. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. Thank Welcome. Thank you. This was really great. Thank you again, Lauren. And I, again, put in a plug for next month. We do this the first Sunday of every month at 1.30. Uh, and uh, you can check the uh, 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 reach out to either uh, me or to the Ethical Culture Society or to Lauren. You can find on your Facebook page or your uh, meetup page, right, Lauren? Facebook? Uh, meetup? Yes, it's on the Vegan Veggie Meetup, the Hack and Sack Vegan Veggie Meetup. Yes. And it's also on the uh, Raw Foods Meetup as well. Excellent. So tell your friends, get them, uh, everybody to come to uh, join us for this. And as I say, if it'll be outdoors, we'll let you know about that. And last, I would just want to remind people that if you'd like to make a donation, uh, we usually would pass the hat when we're live and in person, but uh, because we're virtual, we do uh, ask that people can support our program by making a donation of any amount at ethicalfocus.org slash donate, or just go to ethicalfocus.org and find the, uh, the donate button there. 
So, and we have lots of other good programs and we hope you'll join us for those. And Lauren, thank you again, as always, a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. Lauren. Have fun today. Thanks, you too. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.